Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, crafting, creativity, with a dash of garden, chatting about current interests and life in my northern town. You can find show notes at mycreativecorner3.com. You can also find all of my social media, how to purchase a virtual cup of coffee, and all events on the website. Please feel free to stop by and leave a comment. I really appreciate everyone who listens. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the podcast. Good Saturday to all. It is the 26th of June, 2021. And I must say that it is a very quiet, overcast with just a light sprinkle of rain watering the garden, which is now probably at the height of its blooming. I mean, all colors are represented. There's yellow from the primrose, a blue color from the bluebells. There is a teeny bit of red from a couple of poppies, pink from my old fashioned roses, and yellow from more daylilies. And I think I see some orange getting ready to bloom from the daylilies. The good news is we got the wildflower seeds planted. The bad news is it's been kind of cold and rainy since we planted them. So I'm seeing a couple of leaves pop and I expect that the next warming trend, the wildflowers will come on in the back half of the garden. I have really been enjoying watching this garden mature and now I'm to the season where I don't really do a whole lot. I'm going to go out and pull a few tall weeds. Uh, I think the weeding is under control. The border around the house and its simplicity is looking good. We have lots of yuccas and fall autumn joy sedums planted with two more rose bushes on the beginning and end by our doors at the front of the house that wraps around to the back. You know, I have to say, I I am a garden enthusiast until about the 4th of July when it starts getting hot and <laughs> there's just nothing really exciting to do except sit out and enjoy it for the rest of the season. I do have my little chairs on the patio. Now, we do have a little bit of yard work to do, but I'm not strong enough to do it. We have some ruts in there from the tree work that was done, and we also have um, some ruts from when the roof work was done. So we're going to do all of that at one time. That's going to be my husband's job and uh, it's going to be on his timetable. You know, usually in the fall, work is very busy in the summer. And what about work? Have you experienced this over the last couple of weeks? It's been chaos. What is it? I think it's the universe. I really do because um. Quite honestly, it's been hectic and busy and I'm back in the office. I think the world is starting to open back up. People are traveling more. It seems like people are stressed more trying to figure out what is this summer going to be? Do we, you know, wear masks? Do we don't wear masks? Do we, oh, it's just been terribly busy. And then it's like been super weird and people have been grumpy. And I have to say, I was like asking everybody, what is going on? And no one had explanation, but I looked it up. All right. I'm a full believer in the full moon and I felt like the full moon was coming. We were getting a lot of unusual things. And yes, that happened Thursday. And the weirdness before, I think, is totally explained by Mercury was retrograde for quite a few weeks. And um, since that has all passed, I feel like the rain and the wind have blown a cleansing feeling <laughs> over this house. And um, it feels calm today. This morning's very calm, no windy. There was very few sounds of movement until... Yes, I would see waxing very, you know, poetic, right? Until this morning, I think with the rain brought some um, poor soul, I figured out that there is a parking lot that butts up into my property. 
and um, since the um, natural green barrier that was there was cut down so rudely by my neighbor last year, I saw someone with a very large camper and pickup truck with a whole host of children in the rain back up their camper into the parking lot and they've been there all morning. They did get out like they went to go get coffee or something, but it's like I was going to go sit out in my patio, which overlooks my garden, and now I got to see this family. I know, we should probably put up a privacy fence, but that privacy fence will get beaten up by the winter snowplow people. That's what happened to my neighbor, and his fence is almost falling over. So I don't know what to do about it. I think I'm going to just quit complaining and just enjoy. These poor people probably came up here on vacation because it was crazy busy in town. I guess there's a car show up in the UP and people just want to move around. They want some sense of normalcy and vacation. And this was not the weekend for it. That reminds me of the camping I remember growing up. And if my mom's listening, she'll, pro- she'll vouch for it. Every time we went camping, uh, maybe one or two times. It didn't rain the entire time and it was cold and miserable and thunderstorming. And yeah, we left early several times because of it. So I'm going to try not to look out over my vast kingdom in the backyard and watching the birds from the house or even go on the back porch, uh, the patio with the chairs facing my garden. If I do, if it stops raining, I'm going to turn them around toward my house so I can at least sit outside. (laughs) We have a few birds that have nested in the trees and I like to kind of just sit out and enjoy nature for a little bit. So I just have a couple of chores outside and the rest is my husband's job. I feel like I have accomplished all of the things that I'd like to accomplish in the fruits of my labor over the last two years. I'm very pleased with the result. And now I'm just going to enjoy the fairies in the fairy garden. It's two levels as each little um, bluebell is blooming. The columbine, I think, might have a second chance after the rabbit nipped it off. Um, I put a lit um, fairy garden ornament in there and it lights up at night and it flashes. So I think it scared the rabbit away. The columbine is really looking nice. So hopefully it will have its little fairy hat like blooms and I have the miniature hostas and all of that. So one thing I might try later on because the little miniature sedum is blooming. I saw somebody put that in cracks and I have a stacked dry wall retaining wall plant you know put there um, that was broken up concrete from an old sidewalk that was falling apart in a very bad spot from the back door Um, and it really went to nowhere so I thought wouldn't it be super cute to put some of that sedum like a little waterfall in some of those cracks between the levels Oh my, it would be so adorable. I just love the look of those little succulents and what they call alpine plants on Gardener's World. And I want to pop a few in there and give it a real waterfall-like look or a living wall type of look. So I have done well with the outdoor garden. And my indoor garden at work, I took the best plants to work. Um, I have a pothos and a... It's a miniature rubber tree, some sort of, I don't know what it is. It's a peperomia, maybe, I think is its um, long name. And I have a calico. It's just, they're beautiful. But at home, um, some of my plants that weren't looking so good stayed at home. And the one that I wanted to do really, really well went the great way, which was my lucky bamboo. And on its heels this week, the last leaf fell off my pilea or Chinese money plant. So so I have bad luck and no money? Is that what that means? Uh, tell me something I don't already know. So I think I overwatered it or it got too cold or something. But I have a couple succulents inside that are doing really well. My Sansviria and aloe is doing well. I have an angel wing begonia at home and a Norfolk Island pine that's doing well. But three in a row on my window ledge above my sink looking out over my garden is my 
a pot that I'm going to keep watering sparingly for a while and hope that the pilea comes back. And I have a Kalenko that had two plants in it. One died. The other one seems to be coming on. And then next to it was the, I don't know, it looks like a little arrowhead plant. And all of the leaves, if you remember, fell off the spring because it got way too cold. But two of the three leaves have unfurled. So this looks like a hospital ward for my indoor plants up there. Um, so I have a couple looking good. A couple aloes that didn't look so good. But they're they're coming on. And the other ones, I'm babying them back to life. So yes, um, I don't want to have to admit. But I have killed a couple of plants over the last year. They, they, you know, that's when my husband had told me. He was really surprised that everything was doing so well well that I haven't you know I haven't had indoor plants most of our marriage and when I did I would forget to water them and then they all died so this is a good run for me um, but yes I'll be very very happy if a little leaf sprouts up it looks like there might be signs of life in one of the root systems of my Chinese money plant but I think that I may have overwatered it anyway that's the plant update what have I been doing? Well, the quilting front has been good. It's been very good. Uh, this week I didn't long arm much. Um, I finished up my mom's red, white, and blue quilt with all over swirls. And then I just decided to take a break because the next quilt I need to load on is large and heavy. And that is a t-shirt quilt that I've been working on for the last year. And I finished piecing the top of that um, a week or two ago. And now I just need to get the backing prepped. I have the fabric and just load it. That's my goal for the week is to get that pressed, the back pressed, loaded, and just do it all over swirl on that also. And I have the binding fabric all picked out. So I feel like I've done a lot of decision making and I have sourced the material rummage through my stash and I had enough of um, I'm going to put a flannel on the back of it. it it'll be really really pretty and then after that I have um you know a couple of quilts to long arm that are my mom's and the stack of binding um I'm going to do in the fall because it'll be cooler so in the mornings I have been doing more of my morning ritual of getting my cup of coffee doing some journaling and prepping for the day and then I have also done um, some knitting on just grandma's favorite washcloth because I just need a fidget sometimes and can do that in the morning while I'm slowly waking my brain up or at night but I also have been thinking I gotta do something else so July is when Gnome Angel is going to uh, launch her kinship sampler again and they do 100 blocks in 100 days. And this is my third summer of working on this kinship sampler in a bright children's oriented colors with some of my really cute kawaii face um, fussy cut patterns. They're super, you know, it's a fabric with these. They're, they have eyes and they're like little apples and some are like funny. They're like toilets and um, different things. But I've put them on this quilt to be more like an eye spy. And it's eight and a half inch squares with four and a half inch rectangles. And you can put it in that kitchen sink um, set out, which I believe I'm set out layout, which is what I think I'm going to do. And I just have been procrastinating on any sewing. I don't know why. Maybe the mask thing burnt me out. Maybe it was just, I just had a block. I don't know. I just need to do something different, which I have been over the last couple months doing different creative jump starts which we'll talk about more in the our creative souls segment but um overall um I got that out and this week I did three blocks and I realized I'm up to number 65 of 100 I can get this pieced in probably the summer and maybe work on that in the morning with a little bit of long arming at lunch or after work and then do my hand sewing in the evening which is slowly working on these hexagons which I finished if you remember over a hundred in the Sofoxy Mama's 100 
hex season 100 days. I love these 100 day challenges because really what you're doing is you're focusing your energy on one thing for 15 minutes a day or even less. These kinship sampler blocks are really not hard. They're small. Um, I can cut them out if I'm really focused and have my fabric pretty much decided. Um, I can cut it out and sew it in 15 minutes a day, which is how I've been really getting things done. And that is the perfect block. Unlike the Dear Jane, which you can spend a week on one four and a half, five and a half inch block. Depends because, you know, I have both four and a half and five and a half. <laughs> yeah, I know. The Dear Jane is, is in timeout um, until I figure out what I want to do with it. But the kinship will be done. And then I have a um, Irish chain that I started last winter that I have. I will start working on that once I get kinship done. And then I am, I'm going to do some English paper piecing. And I don't know um, what I want to do after that. I have a couple of things that I earned the fabric for that are, I really don't know what I want to do with, with it. There's some really cute things in there that I keep looking at. I can't even recall the line. But I still have leftovers also from my, uh, when Angel and I together did the Best Friends Quilt Along. And that's got some really pretty fabric. And I'm thinking I may put some of that in with the, the ombre in this kinship also. But I don't know. I'm thinking I might just make a whole nother quilt with that and throw in another focus fabric I don't know. I just have so many things I'd like to do, but I'm trying to very, very discipline myself, be very disciplined because, you know, you can get 110 U, um, UFOs that way. Right. And I don't like that. It gets, I don't know. It kind of nags at the back of my mind that I have all these unfinished projects. So I'm kind of been following just get it done quilts about she calls clearing the decks and that's how I feel. I got all of my quilts done. I've wrapped up a couple of long projects that I see light at the end of the tunnel and it gives me um, freedom in my mind to think about other things that I want to do and I'm just pretty excited about it. So the possibility that later on this summer or fall I can start a totally new project and have all of my old one's done. Yes, I still have some orphan blocks and I still have some things that I want to make out of them, but you know, I've got lots of time to work on it. And if those blocks, I give them away I, when I go through a purge again, then that's what will happen to them. They're orphaned for a reason. They're usually not perfect or they were an experiment or a test. So lots of things to do in quilting. And I have I feel like I've made a big dent in the stash that I've had from the inheritance of my um, deceased friend. Um, that's getting down to being more manageable. I keep giving it away to people that I love who need fabric. And I'm just pretty excited that that is also something that was weighing on my mind and it seems to be more manageable. So I feel like this creative freedom so I don't know what else to say about the quilting. I've made a few blocks. I hand stitched a few of my um, prepped hexes and the, the B hex, if you remember, I finished that with um, a couple of borders a few weeks ago. So I'm just making hexes just with the flowers and seven of them. And I really like them. And what am I going to do with them? Um, just probably put them in a sampler type quilt. I don't know if they're going to be a grandmother's flower garden, but I do like the appliquing them on a background. That was fun and you can do in just a few minutes once the hexes are done. So I don't know what I'm going to do. That I'll just keep sewing the hexes and make decisions as I go along because you know that's how I make quilt. I don't always have a plan. You just start out and do them. I have also been expanding my creative jump starts with all of the different types of crafts. What's good news is that um, 
my sister, she's been gardening like a mad woman too. Um, she's going to be changing jobs in the future where she has a few more hours a week. So I'm going to talk to her more about doing some things together as projects um, for the Our Creative Souls segment. But I have been um, doing photography um, on our nature rides. I've been working on Zentangle and Doodles. I did a watercolor experiment where I was practicing the different tones and values and I had them all painted out on two small sheets of paper. And this week I filled up one of them with line drawings and the Micron pen works really well, but I need a thicker one because some of the pigment was pretty thick and the thin one didn't want to draw over it. I also have a Sharpie um, fine point and I used that on a couple of them. So I think I, you know, this is a project where I think I learned a lot. See, I, I think a lot, don't I? I overthink a lot. And I want to do some more of that. I found it so much fun. And you can go to Pinterest and find some really cool um, inspiration photos. And then you can make your own. The color wash is a great technique. Um, I also want to experiment more with like the reverse coloring book kind of a thing where you take the watercolor and you abstract different colors to make something. You know, when you're done, you can use line drawings on top and make it look kind of like a abstract. I like that a lot. I've seen it done a couple different ways and I really, really like it. So watercolors, I just want to keep working on practicing with that because I don't know much about it. And I really have to learn by hands-on with it. I think you do with any kind of painting. But I am no painter um, to make like fine art with it. Nope, uh, that's not me. I have started doing the book, the exercises in the book called, what is it called? Oh my gosh, I did get the artist's way and I'm going to do that after this particular book. I have to go on my app and my phone here. Dare to Create by Marie Boudin. And I have taken a month to do the first two exercises. And um, right now, the challenge is, how do you find time? Well, I already do that, right? The 15 minutes a day. But I get lots of ideas and sometimes you want to prioritize them. Kind of like what I did a few minutes ago in prioritizing the projects that I want to do. And I write them down, you know, in a journal. And she has some really good ideas on mapping out what you would like to do. What's super fun about doing these creative jump starts, like this watercolor experiment. I mean, it may not go anywhere. I may frame some. I may cut them up and put them in my art journal. Who knows what I'm going to do with them? I get more and more ideas. And this is something that never ceases to amaze me that creativity brings on more creativity. And I'm just like having more ideas and have to write them down so that in the fall and winter, when I get stuck on what to do, because I think also my creativity goes with the daylight. Sometimes in the fall and winter, I don't feel as creative. But I also have to make a difference between creativity and productivity. I'm doing these things because I want to, not because I feel I want to check some star off, um, check some box or put a gold star. There, I blended that too much. That didn't go well. So let's say it again. I want to check it off the list. That's productivity or put a gold star on it. No, I want to do these things because I want to. I also want to practice some more on the cyanotypes. Um, I've been watching more videos and getting more ideas, but we haven't had a good sunny day since the last go round on the cyanotypes. And I want to take some paper with me so that the grandkids and I can play around with that. Yes, in about two or three weeks, I'm going to visit them and for a week and we're going to do all kinds of things, I hope, that are crafty and fun and just get to know each other because it's been a couple of years since I've seen them. I've talked to them on the phone or video calls, but yeah, so it'll be fun. Um, just, just hanging out. No big plans there. And then my husband and I are going to drive down there in the fall on a road trip and visit them. 
in October and hope that no hurricanes go through Virginia at that time. <laughs> Even if it rains the whole time, it's fine. It's fine. Everything will be fine. That's my the favorite skit um, on the Holderness Family uh, YouTube channel. The, the wife always says that. It's fine. Everything's going to be fine. So I want to talk about a few things that I'm loving right now. And a couple of them are YouTube channels. I haven't watched um, Kate at the last Homely House East of the Sea is the name of her YouTube channel in a while. And I have recently started watching her again. Um, I really, you know, it just had so much going on. I didn't have time to watch it. And she has done some really fun things. What I really like is she has a little tree house and she cleaned it out and did a video where she cleaned it out and made, it's a little retreat and she made a bed and she was doing some hand sewing and some darning in there. So super fun. I have been loving that channel. The other thing that I have been loving is Gardener's World on BritBox. I have caught up and I'm watching each show as they are new on the weekend. Uh, that's super fun because I learn something about gardening every week. And Carol Klein has done a series that I've been watching too, where it's one year of what she does in her garden. She is a gardener that's often on Gardener's World. So she had her own show and on BritBox or YouTube, you can see that. And on BritBox or YouTube, you can watch Would I Lie to You? It's kind of a funny comedy improv meets game show where the points don't matter. If you remember the Drew Carey um, game show, who, whose line it is it anyway? I watched that a lot over the pandemic and I really, really enjoyed watching some of those. I also enjoy watching um, more, kind of a more serious channel for music people is Rick Beato. He is a musician. He also does ear training and guitar methods on YouTube, but he talks about music and I really enjoy watching him. It, it's also inspired me to try to get my um, music out again and play whether I'm plinking around on the piano. I've tried playing my violin a time or two and it's gone pretty well. The other thing that I'm loving right now is Costco. People, uh, what can I say? Um, I've been there three or four times now. We never had one close to us. It was like two or three hours to go to the nearest one. Um, we have one 70 miles and there's one down in Midland that we went to that's much bigger when we went to a wedding last weekend. I am loving it because it's like all the things that I ever wanted, um, large size, uh, which, you know, I have a small house, but yeah, I got more things kind of on my counters and I have to be careful about, you know, things that mice can get into, but I enjoy having all that toilet paper stored on my front porch. <laughs> it's enclosed, you know, so no one can see it and it can't get damaged. But I also, I'm loving a lot of things there. Um, their hot sauce and their meat is good. I've been buying their chicken. I mean, it, it's, it's really good. And I thought the price is great. So I've been loving Costco. I thought that it was worth the membership. And I didn't think that it would be something that I would really enjoy. And maybe it was the pandemic um, making me realize that I needed to have a little bit more food in the house than what we have been running. And the other part is I have a little bit more disposable cash now than say when the kids were little, right? Cause money was a lot tighter then. And, um, so we can buy some things, have it in the freezer and be ahead. So I've been loving Costco. You know, I have also been loving watching old reruns of true crime shows like Forensic Files. They're half hour shows. I can pop it on during lunch hour while I'm hand stitching if I don't put a quilt on the machine. Or is, I don't know, it's like a fun thing, fun, because they're talking about murders and stuff, but it's, I always enjoy the forensics of it. So it's a nice transition from work to evening. And I've been enjoying watching all of those 
old uh, forensic files show. And lastly, what I've been loving is my rowing machine. Um, you know, it took a couple weeks or a month off in May because we had to do some renovation to the garage and it's all cleaned up and all the equipment's arranged and I just love it. We come home after work. I can only do 10 minutes right now without my legs feeling like they're going to fall off. But 10 minutes on a rowing machine is, it's a pretty stout cardiac workout. And then I do, you know, things that my physical therapist said I should be doing is exercises for my hips, I'm getting stronger so I can use the dumbbells and hand weights. You know, so I've been able to get in a workout most days. I want to say I did three or four this week. I've also felt better from the rowing to where I can get up at work and take advantage of the really long hallways in my building, which only have a few people um, coming and going now with um, people are coming into work sometimes, but we're still not where everyone is in work. So I can walk up and down the hallways and not be a distraction to a lot of the off the people who have offices down there and, or it's raining out and I'm trying to get up over a few thousand steps a day. I know really that doesn't sound like huge amount, but it is for me. And, you know, so I'm feeling good about the rowing has encouraged more exercise. Boy, this sounds like creativity, doesn't it? Um, where exercise gets you uh, doing a little more exercise because you're feeling better and stronger and you can do more exercise. It's a circle of positivity, just like creativity. I get more creative the more creativity um, I do. So that's uh, the things that I've been loving right now. We have um, a nice rowing machine and I have to say it was well worth the money. I have talked about that in the past. But I'm, I'm using it regularly and I feel good about the investment. So we are looking at a few Highland games being added to the schedule this summer. I'll probably go to a few of them. Not all of them, but a few. Um, I still need a little bit of my introverted um, downtime at home. But some of them are just, it's so hot and they can be really long days. And, you know, there's some of them where the festival is kind of like, Meh. you know, I may go to the Renaissance Festival in September because that's on and my husband has a Highland game then. Um, but I don't think I'm going to go to Indiana. That That's his last and one big trip because it's just a lot of sitting and I am not able to sit like that anymore. And I can't tolerate the heat like that anymore. Just, just can't. So, but I'm looking forward to going to a few more events, a few more um, Highland Games. And I'm thinking the next podcast will be after the 4th of July. So I'm hoping the weather is good. We have purchased tickets to go watch the fireworks at Greenfield Village. They're supposed to have the Detroit Symphony Orchestra playing the 1812 Overture and Oh, I just, I've always wanted to hear that live with fireworks. I've played it several times in orchestra, um, but this is going to be awesome to be, you know, I've always wanted to, to be somewhere where a professional orchestra was playing and fireworks in the background. I am way excited for this. And there's just nothing quite like the Greenfield Village and Henry Ford Museum. So the village is the outside with the, um, buildings that are fully restored and there's a little town village in different time periods and the museum is um, indoors and it has all just it's a museum so it takes you can't do it all in one day I'm just telling you if that's an interest for you you need to budget uh, several days to do two days at least to do the minimum at both of them but since we live so close we can go back several times and then revisit the places that we didn't get to spend a lot of time in the last time or trip before. So that's my big excitement. I'm hoping the weather is better and it's not a pouring down rain that cancels the fireworks. And I still hope to hear the DSO. I haven't heard them play in years, so it will be so much fun. Um, yeah, you're going to notice that I've slowed down the podcast a little bit, sometimes weekly, sometimes every two weeks. 
Uh, that's how homegrown podcasts are. Um, I'm not going to apologize about it. I'm just saying when I have time and when I'm have a moment, I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to try to do a minimum of two a month for a month is probably not going to happen. And the other thing that I have, um, removed from my plate is the patron program. And I want to thank everyone who has supported me through patron, but it became, um, difficult for me to come up with the extra content for patrons. And I am, I feel good about that. And I, I have had wonderful support over the years, but there is another avenue, which I think is a one-time buy me a virtual cup of coffee, which I think has been more successful. And you can do that either on Etsy or Kofi and just buy me a virtual cup of coffee. It's, it's a one-time commitment. And I appreciate all of those who have purchased me a virtual cup of coffee. Um, all of those things help defray the cost of the podcast equipment and um, websites, etc. So and that is one way you can support the podcast. But there's lots of ways you can support the podcast, like sharing with your friends, letting your quilt guild know. Um, people still to to this day, it shocks me, don't understand what podcasts are and what I like is the homegrown radio style as Francis of Off Kilter Quilt calls it so it is so much fun to do a podcast but I am slowing down a little bit and that kind of stuff but I have other new things on the horizon this fall I have a lecture trunk show slash workshop at a guild in Michigan. Um, so I'm looking forward to that and I'll be prepping slideshow, you know, like a PowerPoint and handouts. And I have to practice making that quilt again, even though they want to, um, do the arrows with the bonus blocks as the workshop. And I can remember how to make it, but I want to practice it as a teacher and, refresh myself with the ins and outs and the tips and tricks of making that particular quilt. So those kinds of things are exciting. And I'm still working full time in weaving all of this in and around my job. But I have decided that, um, you know, taking time for me on a weekend that's raining and just sipping on my coffee and working on a few blocks, I'm going to print off a few stickers with my Cricut for July I have a planner that has come in and I'm going to renew the silk and sonder for three more months and see um, if I feel like after six months, if I want to do an annual membership. Uh, But it's fun to have stickers and things um, to help decorate it. And I have no idea which ones I'm going to print off for July, but I have uh, several of them saved in my Cricut design program. So that's going to be my project for this weekend and thinking about um, for July journal of what I want to set up and work on in addition to their theme. They have a self-help theme in every in every journal. So that's been what I've been up to the last couple of weeks. Let me know in the comments of the show notes, which you've been up to. Feel free to uh, comment on the program too at mycreativecorner3.com. Everyone have a most wonderful week. Quilt on, everyone.